everyone. Welcome back to another supplemental on Thomas and Friends Home Media Reviews. This is going to be a Best of Gordon extravaganza, because we not only have one copy to look at here, we have two copies. Let's first take a look at this VHS right here, Best of Gordon. You guys remember this, right? It's Best of Gordon. Yeah, we remember this on when we covered it on Home Media Reviews a long time ago. Had that tear on the bottom of it, unfortunately. But if we slide this out, you'll remember I got gypped a few years ago on eBay. The seller sent me a 10 Years of Thomas VHS tape inside of this case. Uh, it, it also came with the Best of Gordon cassette tape, which if I'm remembering this correctly is not all that common. Uh, so that's cool. I still have that, but I wanted the Best of Gordon VHS. I got a 10 Years of Thomas. That was not cool. But a really cool fan of mine reached out. His name is Ricky. Uh, he actually bought something from me on eBay uh, a few months ago and has been sending me stuff uh, for a while now. One of his surprise donations was this. It's a bare Best of Gordon VHS tape. And he said, I want you to put this in your VHS case uh, that has the 10 Years of Thomas inside of it. So, Ricky, if you're watching... I'm doing just that. Not much else to look at on the VHS front. Just now I have two copies of The Best of Gordon and I'm probably going to sell my extra one. I'm going to keep the one that was donated to me. But So let's go ahead and move this VHS out of frame and let's take a look at these two DVDs right here. This is just a brief refresher. This is the original Best of Gordon DVD. And then here's your 2007 print. Let's see if his whistle works. Wow, that is really sad. <laughs> I assure you that it's nothing that I've done to these. I'm storing them in uh, cool, dry places, but technology inside of these slipcovers, they're over 15 years old now. Of course, they're, they weren't built to last forever. I'm sure when this was brand new on store shelves, it sounded amazing. But now it does not. Still cool to have, though. There's the back and all that. And then inside of it, take the slipcover off. It's just your normal Best of Gordon underneath. Oh, this one actually has the pamphlet. I forgot about that. But there's all that. So recently, I walked into a Goodwill on the hunt for a new VCR. Both of my old ones are now uh, no longer working. So I needed another one and you can pretty much only find them at thrift stores I've looked at pawn shops nobody has them now uh, so pretty much the only place that you you can find a good working VCR is at Goodwill I did find one it's a Sony VHS and JVD combo unit doesn't have the remote but I'm never gonna use the DVD portion so I don't need it it's really nice too. It was really clean and it was only nine bucks. However, that's not the only thing I found. I found a reprint of The Best of Gordon from I think this was 2009, 2010 maybe. It's in a slim case so it's from a wooden train bonus pack. However, it's a variant we haven't seen on home media reviews yet. So, I give you Best of Gordon with the Olympic Winter Games from Vancouver 2010 stickers all over it. Uh, I guess whoever owned this previously was really into these. Um, give me just a second. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take these off. After about five minutes, the stickers have been removed. That was pretty easy. They just peeled right off. And now... We have a untainted Best of Gordon from the early 2010s. So let's take a look at it here. Thomas and Friends, got a gold banner up there, blue banner behind it with the Best of Gordon. And a really cool title card. I don't know why I like that so much. Includes nine stories. We have a box car with a, I think that's a behind the scenes photo of Gordon. Maybe it's a stock photo. 
Uh, but he's inside the boxcar. It's not classic Gordon. It's like season eight and onwards Gordon, but pretty cool. These posters, they're okay. I know some people that vehemently hate these, but I don't know. I'm indifferent to them. I like the classic posters more, but this was a cool experiment, I guess. The spine, it's going to be hard to focus this up here. Hit logo, very small because this is a slim case. Best of Gordon. Very teeny tiny little... Come on, camera. Focus up here. Come on. Come on. I told you this is going to be hard. <laughs> <laughs> it does not like these skinny case variants. Uh, we got a little teeny portrait of Gordon from the front there, and then distributed by Lionsgate down there at the bottom. The back, there's no barcode because this was I included in a larger package. Uh, favorites from Thomas and Friends with a little banner across there. We've got a blurb, another box car with our bonus features there, and your story stops. Uh, listed there. You, you all know how much I love when they actually list the stories that are on a disc. Love that. Hate how they stopped doing that. Uh, we got two shots from... Is that Gordon and the Gremlin? No, no, I think that's Gordon... Um, a better view for Gordon. I forgot the episode name there. And then that's the trouble with mud. Link to the Thompson Friends website. Legalese and stuff down there at the bottom. And if we open this up, there's no pamphlet. Your artwork is now a expanded photo of this photo of Gordon from the front. So that's cool that they actually changed the artwork. They didn't just reuse this artwork here. I'm sure they just reused uh, the burn file, but uh, I don't know. We'll have to see when we look at the menu. So that's a fun close-up of a fun variant of the Best of Gordon. Let's move right along to the menu tour. All right, folks, here we are for a menu tour of The Best of Gordon. And so far, this menu is exactly the, the, the same as the other copies that we have looked at here on the show. Nothing has been changed. You got Thomas and Sir Topham Hatt talking there. They're talking about how Sir Topham Hatt's giving Gordon a day off, I presume, because he's just been so good. Uh, so we got Play All Stories, Pick a Story, Fun and Games, and Web Fun. Let's take a look at Pick a Story first. Yeah, pretty standard here. We got Gordon takes a dip down the mine, whistles and sneezes. Got another page with another three stories on it. You got nine stories in total on here. That's a pretty good amount. And if we go to the fun and games section, boy, that Gordon is way out of scale. Did you see how he just moved like that? Oh, it's so out of scale. Uh, we got Gordon's memory game, fun with numbers. We have best of Gordon trivia and character gallery. You know, I can't remember if we actually played a game on one of these during the original Home Media review, but that trivia, that's calling my name. Let's take a look at that. So now we go inside the shed. Oh, Gordon, I was afraid he was going to run us over there for a second. Uh, we don't need to hear the instructions. As a matter of fact, Gordon, we can't hear you. So let's hit begin. Who teased Gordon for accidentally riding the branch line in wrong road? That's a good question. Uh, that would be Bill and Ben. Yep, correct. Yay! Oh, and it plays a clip. Well, that's fun. I can't skip it, though. So we just have to sit here in silence. What's that? asked Bill. Sheesh, said Ben. It's Gordon. It looks like Gordon, but it can't be. Gordon never comes on the branch lines. He thinks them vulgar. Did you guys like my Bill and Ben voices? I thought they were pretty good. What does Sir Topham Hat tell Gordon he can't do when Gordon refuses to take a bath in the story of the trouble with mud? Uh, it's pull the passenger coaches, I'm pretty sure. He tells him he can't go back to the shed. Yes, it, yes, exactly. And he can't pull any in Clarabelle. Hmm. No, it's pull passenger coaches. Come on. Give me a hard one. Oh, goodness gracious, said Sir Topham Hat. You can't pull the train. Henry will have to do it. Now, Gordon, you better get clean straight away. See, I gave Sir Topham Hatt that kind of middle-aged type of voice. Not like a smoker type thing, but I could have done that. I could have coughed a little bit more. In the trouble with mud, what blew onto the tracks and made them so slippery that James could not climb Gordon's Hill? I'm going to say paper. 
yeah, it was definitely paper. A paper factory just exploded and a bunch of it fell onto the tracks. No, it's obviously leaves. Rocks don't make tracks slippery. Come on. Earlier, a paper factory <laughs> had exploded, blowing shards of paper on t t to the tracks. Who tricks Henry into taking some old, dirty tenders in the story Tender Engines? Hmm. This one's actually kind of interesting. It's obviously d Duck, but was Donald in that episode? Hmm. It's obviously Duck, though. I'm not stupid. You guys thought I had to think about that one for a second, didn't you? No, I know my Thomas. Yeah, there's... Is that Donald or Douglas? I can't see his number. Henry, he asked. Would you like my... T tenders? Right, he says, Would you like them, to Donald? I wouldn't... Deprive you, 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 you of the honor, said Donald. In the story Tender Engines, how many cars does Henry take? I have six, and you can have them this evening. Six lovely tenders, said Henry. What a splendid sight I'll be. So you see, here's the part where he says the... I have six. Got him good, dude. <laughs> All right, number six. What kind of animal frightens the VIP's dog in Gordon and the Gremlin? It's a bull. There are no, there's no moose on the island, and why would a dog be frightened of a goat? Although my dog is frightened of everything, and she's a seventy-pound pit bull, but she's a big fraidy cat. Here goes the dog, and he's gonna see the bull in three, two. There he is. Wow! What? Wow! <laughs> Did you guys see that? I'm pretty sure somebody on Twitter has already pointed that out. But did you see the rack on that thing? <laughs> Maybe not a rack, but he's packing. <laughs> in Gordon and the Gremlin, where did the dog go after he was frightened? Uh, he ran into the forest and was eaten by a bear. Wow, that's dark. Uh, no, it's Thomas's cab. He didn't stop until he jumped straight into Thomas's cab. Urgh. That was a terrible dog impression. Not as good as Alec Baldwin, sorry. In a better view for Gordon, what did Gordon crash into when his brakes got stuck? Uh, the new station wall. Would have been funnier if he crashed into a tree, though. He would have, like, taken his eye out because a branch would have went through it. The driver reduced steam, but Gordon was still going too fast. Insert Gordon's panicked whistle here. Boom! That is such a good crash. What does Sir Topham Hatt make for Gordon when he repairs the new station in a better view for Gordon? Well, it's obviously A, but that's a little not correct because Sir Topham Hatt, he didn't make that hole. Gordon made that hole. He just fixed up part of it to make it seem like it's Gordon's head. Uh, maybe it's a technicality, but A is correct. A hole in the wall for his view. Would have been funnier if he put up a big stop sign. Just be like, sorry, Gordon, you don't get a view. You just get told to stop because you never did that last time. It's your fault that, that we have this giant hole here. So I'm going to put this stop sign here. You stop right there. I trust that you will always see through it from the, the safety of your own rails. Congratulations, you've answered nine questions correctly. Good for us. Look at that. I answered nine questions correctly, and I'm sure you guys did too. So you know what? Give yourselves a pat on the back for that. Well, that was fun, don't you think? None of those questions were particularly hard, but for a kid, though, it might be a little challenging. But for someone like me who's seen th these episodes probably in the triple digits, uh, it wasn't very hard for me. <laughs> Am I bragging about winning at a Thomas trivia game? Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> anyway, that wraps up your menu tour and your supplemental on this copy of The Best of Gordon. It's unique. It's fun. Um, I think the most unique part about mine was the fact that it had uh, those little stickers on it from the Olympics. It's nice if you want to vary it, I guess. There's nothing here that's new if you already have The Best of Gordon. You don't need to pick this particular copy up, but it is fun if you like variants, like me. So that wraps up the supplemental. Thank you all so very much for watching, and as always, good night, everybody.